<clears throat> Hello. Hello, everybody. It's that time. The time for the last class. La ultima, el fin. The last one. I know. Me too. I feel like the weather, at least in, in Knoxville, is appropriate for such an occasion. Look how gloomy it is outside. Look at this. Overcast. It's just gray. No, oh, I messed my webcam up. It's very delicate. It's a bit of a snowflake. Oh, well. Well, hello, everyone. Hello. Ten viewers. Not not great. Maybe that number will, will increase in a moment. I guess we'll stall for a quick second. Um, how are you guys doing? Nice pool? Thanks. Can I hear anything? That's a great question. In general? Or... I don't know what that means. Can I hear anything? That's so, I feel very existential about that question. Doing okay. Hanging in there. Okay, 15 viewers. We're growing quickly. Excellent. Everybody hanging in there. Hello, hello, hello. You know, on my stream preview, I get fun colors. Oh, no. That's not what I wanted. There we go. Please don't do it again. Okay. I get fun colors for your names, but then on the actual stream, they're all like this, you know, bland green. What's up, Antavis? How you doing? Hello, everybody, everybody, everybody. Let's get to it. Are you going to need analytics solver for the quiz or final? Um, no. I am not going to put chapter 9. I actually didn't specify that. Let me let me make it a little uh Um that is a really really good question. I did not specify 10 10 through 12, and then 14 through 15. Yeah, okay, that's right. All right. Oh, yeah, business statistics is definitely easier. I think so. But, of course, it's hard when everything's squashed into, you know, not enough time. So that definitely makes things worse. Okay. I think that all makes sense. Okay. Uploading. Oh no, I have the date wrong. Why do I why am I like this? Okay, let's refresh. Let's try this again. Nope, still says Thursday the 21st. Refresh. Okay, good. Got the new version. It takes a few seconds to synchronize, but it's pretty quick, all things put, all things considered. Okay, so, recap. Um, just one more reminder. University Climate Studies Survey available through Monday. Please, please, please fill that out. Uh, today we're doing chapter 15. We're just going to do the first part of the introduction and then the payoff tables and decision trees. Um, it is kind of a lot of slides, but that's because it's a whole lot of pictures. So um, ho I don't think it'll take as long as it looks like it'll take. Um, I posted yesterday um, mini assignments, like two or th I think two of them are two questions. Um, 
the fifth, chapter 15 is three questions. So, uh, you know, together it's kind of like two homeworks, I guess, because the previous ones have been like four and this is seven questions put together. So, um, but this is for chapters 12, 14, and 15. All of it um, are, are, to, are uh, going to be considered as one big assignment. Um, now, technically, since it's an in-class assignment, I will uh, officially encourage you to work in groups. Um, so that's all. All three of those are due. Um, oh, it's not Sunday. It's Monday. Monday the 27th. The, the, the day of the month is right. The, the day of the week is wrong. I will fix it on my copy. I'm not going to re, uh, re up, re-download the new one. It's Monday the 27th. Monday the 27th. Oh, the word Monday is longer. Uh, it's no good. Wait, why doesn't it fit now? It fits on this slide. Why doesn't it fit on this one? I don't understand. So on my copy, this wraps into two lines. But then on the downloaded copy, it fits on one. But then oftentimes, the, the vertical alignment's different. So like 5-1 is coming down is almost above the northeastern logo but then here it's clearly below i don't understand why this is different and this is why you often save things as a pdf even when you're because just just things don't look the same in two different places it's really weird i don't really know why because it's just a powerpoint file right you think it'd be standardized but it's not okay so monday April 27th, it's fixed on the source file. If you download it for yourself, it'll be there. Um, it is synchronized to the server. That will count together as in-class assignment two. Quiz two, which will be the same as quiz three and final exam in terms of format, which is to say that the, um, whoops, which is to say that um, they're going to be just like the homework assignments. So um, I don't want to try to, totally change gears on you. I looked at doing maybe things in, uh, in D2L, doing assignments in, in, on D2L, and I just don't think it's gonna be good. Um, you don't see in class assignment two. Do you see chapters 12, 14, and 15? Because that's there isn't an in class assignment two. There's chapters 12, 14, and 15 on MindTap. Those should be there. Yes, so everything is on MindTap. Um, Except for the in-class assignment three exit survey, which we haven't gotten to, and the end of semester end of semester evaluations, those are um, those are on D two L. Everything else is on MindTap. I did not actually say MindTap. I talk. I said MindTap last time. These are your homeworks, like you've had for every other chapter since we've gone to coronavirus, on MindTap. So these are MindTap assignments, and then Chat Quiz 2, available on MindTap. It says right here. Quiz 3, available on MindTap. Final exam, available on MindTap. Let me put my face up in the corner. Okay. Okay, so um, Quiz 2, uh, they're, they're going to function like homework, so they're not timed. Um, you have two days to finish it. I don't think I have a way of timing it. I would if I could. What is the cutoff point for new assignments? Um, whenever I decide. Um, so, um, the, there, there isn't a cutoff. I can assign assignments whenever I choose. Um, so, that's the truth. I mean, if you want to know the real answer, I could lie to you, but, Now, the thing is, new don't be confused. There's there's two things that are very important distinctions. New assignments and new content. Here's the distinction. New content is new. New assignments are more practice. Because there's no better way to learn content than practice. So, we have a little bit to talk about today. And in concept, it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, there's a few definitions and 
some conceptual stuff, but it's largely just it's just applications of what we've done in 368 and 379 up until now. So um, there's really not much new we're going to talk about. So then all these assignments that I'm giving you are practice. So Antavis, what, what would be far worse for you is if I said, okay, we're done with all the assignments, final exams next week, good luck. That would be awful. So yeah, you do... You do have a lot coming up, but that's better than having not a lot coming up because otherwise I'd be just throwing you to the proverbial wolves. So good luck. Are they timed? Um, I don't think I even have the op option to time them, although I would like to put a little bit of a time restriction. Let me look again. I don't think I can, but you know, since you're asking. Please load my list. It's just, why does this take so long? Okay. Let me see. Well, I know you're fine without it, but it doesn't make me happy. Let me see. Can I? I was messing with this earlier, but I didn't... Uh, Fine. I don't care. Just give me something. I don't like this tool. I did choose a question. Oh. Okay. Oh, there is a time allowed per take. Oh, good. Okay. That is a thing. Hmm. So, okay, so I can time them a bit. However, I'm not going to make it like five minutes. I would give you something like 45 minutes to an hour for a quiz, probably, and then the exam would be like two, two and a half hours. You don't have to use that. Um, if you think there is something that is wrong, then I will look at it, but in terms of, I mean, if you put the wrong answer, you put the wrong answer. So the advantage of MindTap is that you know immediately if you have the right answer or not. And so I will give you a chance. Well, yeah, but then just put the comma in. Like, so that you just click the check now button and it tells you if you get it right or not. And then you, you can fix it. So you can, if formatting is an issue, I'm more than happy to. Um, what do you mean you won't know? Like, y there's a check button. Did you, have you not seen that? Did they break this keyboard shortcut? <gasps> I'm going to be so sad. Control shift T. Oh, now it's going to work. Okay. Whatever. Okay. So like you go into an assignment. I'm telling you, it's just, it's just like the assignments. Check my work, this button under my picture that you can't see. There we go. This one. It's going to be just like this. Check your work. Now, I recognize that this feedback is useless, but it's there. It will tell you if it's right or not. So, you know, part of why, part of why I want to do these assignments in MindTap is because you, if you've been doing the assignments, yes, yes, it will. If you've been doing the assignments, you should be used to the process. You should be used to, here's what formatting works, here's what formatting doesn't work. If you've encountered it before, then hopefully you'll be, you know, getting used to the system. So I decided that it would be a little unfair to shift you to a different system, to D2L, and, um, and it would be difficult. So, yes, so when I say it's going to be just like the assignments, I mean that. That's not a joke. That's not hyperbole. It's going to be just like it. I guess I will probably time them 
um, to a degree, but but yeah, so that's nice. You'll have check your answers button, which is why we're going to do mind tap. Otherwise, I would put it on D2L, but I want you to have that check your answers button. So, quiz two, chapters 10, 11, 12 will be available this weekend. It'll go up Friday at midnight, which is like tonight at midnight. Right? So like the, the, the split between Thursday and Friday, right? Friday, 12 a.m., which is like Thursday, 11.59. You know what I'm saying? Not noon. Not Friday at noon. Not the end of the day Friday. The start of the day Friday. And then you'll have it all of Friday. It'll become Saturday. You'll have it all of Saturday. You'll have it all of Sunday. So what I may do on the quiz... So I actually didn't I wasn't even I didn't realize I could do multiple things. Can I make them available earlier? What? Yes, I can. I mean like that's that's like 6 hours. 8 8 hours. So I can make it I mean a little earlier, but that's pretty much that's that's midnight tonight. It's available. So, if you're asking, can you do it like right now? We, I mean, I can make it available for you after class, I guess. But we can talk about it. We can talk about it. I haven't finished making the assignment, so I'll have to finish it before I can give it to you. I've started, but I haven't finished it yet. Um, I will give you a practice final, I promise. Um, end of semester evaluations. These are due on Monday. Monday, 427. Now, remember, quiz three, which is coming up, could be optional if we get to 80% as a class. Um, I looked yesterday afternoon, and we were at 33% as a class. So, um, it may have updated since then, but, um, that's not yet halfway. So, we still got quite a, quite a, quite a ways to go. If you haven't filled out your survey, filled out your survey, please do so. I don't know. It was 33% yesterday. Um, in class assignment three, that's what I talked about last time. Exit survey, talking about Twitch and Discord. I'll make that available to you on finals week. Um, so Tuesday the 28th through Friday 5-1. Uh, the survey is on the D2L homepage. So when you log into D2L, just scroll down. It's on the right. Yeah, he's a jerk. People need to know about him. Okay. Just as a general comment, if, if you have scheduling conflicts, you can let me know. Um, generally, so if I make something available for three days, I don't really like to move it. I made it available for three days so that you could find time to do it. Um, you know, if you work three 12 hour shifts, that's one thing. Um, yeah, we, we have a lot of students that work a full day and then come into class. So, you know, if you have a regular work day and then you need to take the quiz after it, I mean, a lot of people do that. So I want to be sympathetic, but in three days, I want you to try to find the time. You know, I don't want to give everyone their own customized quiz schedule like three days is a lot of time to find for the quiz it's not that long it's not that long of an assignment so i don't know mixed feelings mixed feelings if you have conflicts really feel like you can't make you can't make it happen let me know but it is three days so you have a full 72 hours to try and find you know an hour or something can't see the survey the end of semester survey, homepage, course evaluations on the right. There should be a big button. They used to have a colorful button. I don't know where it went. I don't have one anymore. This is where mine is. Oh, 64%. You guys have been working hard in the last 24 hours. Well done.
By the way, this is a uh, word cloud. This is an analytics tool. It's relevant to our analytics class. I'll talk about it for a quick second. And uh, word clouds are funny because they're both an equal mix of useful and useless. Um, so the bigger the word, the more often that it's that it's used. Um, but like, what do you what words do you see? Information. Oh, we talk about information in a class. The lectures happen. Life happens. Explaining. Does that tell you? Am I explaining it well? Am I explaining it poorly? Am I explaining not at all? So, okay, cooking. I don't feel like I've talked about cooking much. Okay, grade, keep. There are a lot of words that are totally useless in these word clouds. And that's the problem with text mining. Text mining is really hard. Um, if you don't see it, check your email. You should have an email. It starts to load, then disappears. Let me see if I can find a link. Uh, preview, maybe? Uh, no, it doesn't seem like it. I don't, I, I can't access these yet, so... Email students. Oh, well, that's cool. I can set up automatic emails. Students would love that. I can email you like six times a day. Okay, I'll do that later. Everyone would love that. Okay. I will send you guys an email in a couple days. Although, we're doing well. You guys, if you, if you notice, you're the highest number of the three. What do I think of the analytics? There's a million things. There is a flood. I have no way of digesting all of it. As you might imagine, in addition to all the emails I get from like, here's what Spotify is doing in response to COVID. And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> in addition to all of that, there's all of like, you know, the analytics newsletters and academic journals and, you know, special issue on COVID-19. I'm sure there is. So there's a flood of information right now. So, I don't know. Picking between good and bad stuff is hard because a lot of it requires understanding the, the background. And I'm not a doctor of that kind. So I don't know anything about viruses. So me knowing if, you know, oh, this analytics, this, you know, visualization is doing a good job of explaining the situation. I don't really know. So, I don't have much of an educated opinion on these kinds of things. If you have a specific one, I'm happy to evaluate it, but in general, I don't really know. I've seen stuff. I've seen things. Okay, where were we? Evals. Uh, you should have an email for it. You know, end of semester uh, evaluations, you should be able to find it in your email. Um, I will send everyone an email. Uh, and probably I, I was going to set it up for Sunday. Um, so if you can't find it, you'll get an email from me on Sunday. Um, I didn't know I could do it automatically. That's cool. So, uh, I was going to just do it myself on Sunday, but I don't know. That's fun. Learning new things today. Okay. Okay, baby. Where are we? Exit survey. That's a completion grade. Talked about it last time. Exit survey about Twitch and Discord. Tell me what you think. Show me what you got. Leave it on the court. And other fun expressions like that. Um, quiz 3. Available mine on mine tap Tuesday and Wednesday. That's going to cover chapters 14 and 15. And then the final exam. Not covering chapter 9. So that's what I added a moment ago. Somebody asked me. I said a moment like 20 minutes ago. Somebody asked me about chapter 9. Uh, well, more specifically, they asked about Analytic Solver which is chapter 9. No. You don't need analytic solver. It's chapter 12, uh, 10, 11, 12, um, 14, and 15. So we skipped 13. If you remember, if you remember, if you remember geez, words are hard. Okay. 10, 11, 12, 14, 15. That's available on MindTap Wednesday through Friday. So, um, I know that 
like I said, there may be, you may have some conflicts, um, and I am willing to work with you. Um, but I give you, you know, days, intervals, because I'm hoping that most of you can, can work with that time. Um, and I'm trying to spread it out is all the other thing. You know, like Antavis was talking about, like, you know, you've, I know some students, you know, you, a lot of you are taking multiple classes, right? And then uh, finals week is always hectic. You got a whole bunch of stuff to do. Um, so really what you have, you have an end of semester evaluation. Should be pretty fast. You have a completion grade, you know, little questionnaire. Should be only a few minutes. And then assuming we get the evaluations done, you don't need to do quiz three. Quiz three will be will be optional. You can take it if you want to, but you don't have to. So really, other than those two surveys, you have the homeworks, which are both cut, you know, like in half or more. Then you have the quiz and the final. So it's not that much for a week. It's really three things. It's, it's, I mean, it's a lot. I'm not saying it's not a lot, but it's finals week. So, and those are, these, are, these assignments are all helping you build to, to mastery. And that's the point. Okay, I keep feeling like I missed something. I don't know what it is. Looking at my stream chat, the chat record. It disappears over my head, or I guess in this case to the side. That way, that way, right? Yeah. But uh, I have a history on my software over here. Okay, I can't think of anything else, so. Okay, I'll mess with that after class. I didn't know that existed. There are many, many tools that exist. That I have not played with them. I don't know what they do. I can smell. There's a chemical smell in the room. I'm to blame for it. I was messing with the 3D printer. And I can smell it from across the room. It doesn't smell very good. Okay, chapter 15. So, you know, I've kind of said this whole time in class that... Well, let's, let's say it this way. What is the point of business analytics? Anybody remember, by the way? Do you guys remember the four-word definition? Of business analytics? I'll give you a hint. T D I A. Put in the chat if you can remember. I'll give you a second to think about it. Wait, I think I said it wrong. <laughs> T-D-I-I. -I. Yeah, if I can spell. That'll help. Close. Very close. Two and a half of those words are correct. I'll play Mastermind. Natalia is even closer on the first one. Okay, we now have three words. That's close enough for me, actually. Transforming. Oh, geez. There we go with the end of the word. Transforming. Transforming. 
transforming data into insights. I apologize for the bad clue spelling earlier. So this is the point of business analytics, right? But insight, is insight really the goal of all this? Well, to a degree, no. It's not the end goal. It's the point of analytics, but there's an implied f final step, and that is doing something with that information, actually changing your organizations, making decisions based on those insights. That is really the point of all of this. However, analytics, the analytics itself is mostly focused on the insight portion of it. It's extracting important information from a sample or in, in some or, or displaying information from a sample, these kinds of things. So decision analysis is not necessarily like core part of business analytics, but it is a very obvious ending point for this course, right? We start with data, we start with, we go to visualizations, we do regression, we do data mining, we do, then we do data modeling, we start doing spreadsheets and start, start asking the questions of what do we do with this information? And so in the last chapter, we started talking about Monte Carlo simulation because life is uncertain and, uh, and to a degree unpredictable. And so we have to make complicated decisions in an uncertain reality, in a world of... You know, if you've ever seen the movie uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, there's a world of pure imagination. We're a world of pure uncertainty. There are no... There's no magic, but there is uncertainty. And so decision analysis is all about what do we do with this uncertainty? So, um, you know, and I've already said a lot of this stuff. Business analytics is about making better decisions at the end of the day. Um, and this is going to help us make an optimal strategy. So the word optimal almost doesn't apply here because there are several optimal choices that are optimal in different ways. You will, we will find that there are often several good decisions. Now, sometimes we don't know which ones are which, but there will be good decisions, and then there will be certain decisions that prefer, that, that tend to uh, give certain results. So, decision analysis, which is the point of this chapter, includes not just you know, an expected value, but considering risk in your decisions. So um, we're going to consider, okay, well, sure, it's important to know what's the long-term average, but most of the time in reality, we don't get to experience the long-term average. We only get one instance. And so we're going to get information about favorable outcomes as well as unfavorable outcomes. And then we're going to consider these problems, and we're going to start by looking at, you know, a small number of decision variables, or small, I mean, decision alternatives, um, and a small number of possible things that the future may hold. Uh, and so there's several things we could talk about. Um, we're not going to make it to the second or the third. We're just going to talk about payoff tables and decision trees. Okay. Uh, so if you remember decision trees, we actually had them in... 368 in business statistics. You've seen them before. We're just going to put them in a slightly new context. Um, so as we've had with several things in the last few chapters, the very first step of our process is just to understand the problem. Creating a verbal statement is a really good place to start. Let me have my laser pointer. Creating a verbal statement is a good place to start. So the first thing we have to do is look at decision alternatives. So we have things that we control, and then we have things that we don't control. And then we're interested in combining what we do control and what we, what we don't control with, as Natalia just said, yes, exactly, with the chances for what could happen and what, and what would not, might not happen. Okay, so for an illustration problem, let's say that we are uh, helping out the Pittsburgh Development Corporation 
with a construction project. And PDC, the Pittsburgh Development Corporation, has commissioned some architectural drawings for uh, three different projects that they're considering. And um, we are going to assume that the financial success of the project, so you know what happens in terms of revenue and costs and blah, 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 depends largely on um, the size of the condo. So basically, which of the condo, condo complex do we build, small, medium, large? And um, what is our demand? Do we have a small amount of demand or a high amount of demand? So we're assuming that these are otherwise identical, that um, the demand is simply, you know, how many units are demanded. These aren't like 30 expensive, these are 60 medium and 90 cheap. It's not, that would be totally different. Um, it's just like small, medium, large of the same facility. You can almost think of it as I can make one block of 30, I can make two blocks of 30, or I can make three blocks of 30, um, but they're all the same. And we're interested in the demand. Can I not click next with a laser pointer? Guess not. Okay, so um, what are we gonna do here? Well, we have only one decision. Remember, demand is outside of our control. So our decision is simply which size of condo complex are we going to purchase? So the decision is to try to select the best size for the condo complex. So we will have decisions and we use the letter D to represent decisions. So we have D1, D2, and D3. Um, D1 is the small complex, D2 is the medium complex, D3 is the large complex. I kind of would have rather used DS, DM, and D, um, DL, but this works. This is a more formal notation. Um, it works better for larger problems, so pros and cons. Okay, so um, we have our decisions, and then we have the things that could happen in the future, and we call these states of nature. Um, which, I don't know, it's a term, I don't know that people actually use it all that much. Um, there are more formal terms that people use in other problems, so I don't know. Um, but here's what's important. These possible outcomes, these states of nature, are two things. Mutually exclusive, so there's no overlap, no more, no more than one of the states of nature will occur. It'll be one state of nature, exactly one. So... All of the states of nature are mutually exclusive. If one happens, the, other, the others can't. And they are collectively exhausting. Co sorry, collectively exhaustive. So collectively exhaustive on its own means at least one must occur. And mutually exclusive means no more than one can occur. You put these together, then you say one and only one of the possible states of nature can occur. So uh, for this example, we will use S for state state of nature, um, and we'll just break it down into strong and weak demand. So we'll say that there's strong demand, there's weak demand, and those are your only two possibilities. Obviously, life is a lot more complicated than that, but for this illustration, that'll do. That'll do, pig. Woo! Excuse me. Mm. I actually think in some ways afternoon is the hardest time for me to teach. I'm always sleepy in the afternoon. I don't know about you guys. Mm. Okay, so um, I promised you two things. I promised you payoff tables, and I promised you decision trees. A payoff table is actually not complicated. It sounds complicated maybe, but it's actually simple. Um, it's not like bribery, that kind of like, oh, we got to pay this guy off. No, 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 no. It's very simple. It's basically based on your decision alternatives. You have your list of decisions and you have your list of states of natures. And so for each combination of decisions and states of nature, what payoff is there? How much money do you make? Well, uh, we can see that if we build a large complex and we have a lot of demand, that's great. We make 20 million dollars. Yeah, I was like, where's the scale? Aha, million dollars. All right. $20 million. Whoo, that sounds nice. But if I choose large complex and demand is weak, I lose $9 million. And uh, something you might, not, you might not know, losses are worse than wins, like than gains are good, even of the same percentage. A 10% loss is worse than a 10% gain is good. 
So in this case, you might make 20, you might lose nine, but that's not saying like, oh, this is twice as good because a loss of $9 million may completely ruin your organization. You may just go bankrupt. That would be very, very bad. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is, these individual numbers are payoffs and this group together is the payoff table. So that's really all it is. It's just a payoff table is a combination of decisions and alternatives. High risk, high reward, baby. Yeah, I mean, that's a legitimate option. So decision, decision analysis is really just about understanding when is the risk worth it. You got to risk it for a biscuit. I have, one of my best friends says that all the time. He'll be like, hey, 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 hey. I don't, do you see a biscuit? And he looks really serious. Do, do you see a biscuit right now? I don't see a biscuit right now. Therefore, there's no reason to risk. Oh, there is a biscuit? Oh, we going for. He's a very, if you, see, if you think I'm loud and dramatic, he's to blame for a lot of that. Because he's worse and he's rubbed off on me. But he's a really genuinely a good person. He's just, he's me, but then like turned up to 11. It's kind of scary. Anyway, okay, um, there is a notation here. I don't even care. I'm skipping it. Okay, we don't need it. Which we choose? Which of our alternatives? I'm so glad you asked. Okay, so first of all, there's, there's, there are two more things we need to consider before I can answer that question. But we're not there yet. I will tell you in a moment. It's very important. But we, we need to get there first. So remember, we're doing all of this in the context of two things. Payoff tables, decision trees. So I've shown you payoff tables. Let's do decision trees. And then I will answer Billy's excellent question. Okay. So a decision tree is a graphical representation of the decision-making process, right? So the payoff table tells us what happens at the end of the decision-making process, given the combination of decisions and outcomes. But the tree shows us all the possibilities and the sequence of the progression that can occur over time. So, um, if you remember the top left most payoff back here, $8 million if we choose small and there's a small, I'm sorry, a strong demand. Okay? So, that would be choosing small and then strong demand. So uh, I like this image because it makes me think of Emperor Palpatine and his chain, like his chain lightning, the force lightning, you know. <sighs> That's what I think of when I see this, and it makes me happy for some reason. I don't know. Feel, do with that information what you will. But what's important here is we have squares, which are decisions. Because this is the fingers, by the way. This is the fingers. This is the lightning. Are you seeing it? Are you getting the image? I think it's good. It makes sense in my head, whatever that's worth. <laughs> so anyway um <laughs> unlimited power <laughs> ah the memes okay um and uh, his, his just like maniacal laughter he's like <laughs> it's great so anyway speaking of great decision analysis so we have these squares are decisions circles are states of nature okay so it's very important to remember Squares are your decisions, circles are states of nature, okay? So, this is the first node in the network. So, you know, kind of like you're, you know, you're, you're max and relaxing and being all cool, and we come into our decision. Ah, we have a decision to make, okay? Okay, we can choose to build a small condominium complex, a medium complex, or a large complex. And then, we experience our demand. So you'll notice that S1, S2 are the same, right? Strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, right? It's just repeats, right? It's just like that sick beat. You're waiting for the guy to come in, start laying down the verse, right? You feeling me? Yeah, that's it. It just re repeats. Strong, weak, strong, weak, yep, strong, weak, each time. And then we refer to our table from a few slides back to fill in the payoff. So that's what this column is. This is the payoff table organized into a decision tree formula. I'm um, sorry, format. So 
payoff tables tell you what goes on the end of the, of the decision tree, and then the decision tree tells you the sequence of what happens, uh, what you choose, and then what happens. And sometimes it's nested. Like, I make a decision, I learn something. I make another decision, I learn more. Um, this kind of thing happens. And then in some certain, certain, in some certain circumstances, it's continuous. Like if you're um, a stock manager, for example. So this is the like simplest possible case. Make a decision, wait for the results. Okay, I already talked about that. Um, okay, so there are, I didn't talk about the branches exactly. So the branches are these like line things here. Um, and you know, it, it works like a playoff bracket or you know, anything else like that. Um, so in the other direction, I suppose, playoff brackets would go going this way, right? But um, so this, it, depending on which decision you choose, will take you to a certain node. And then based on what happens, strong or weak, will take you to a relevant payoff. So I was hoping, I'm hoping that from 368 that that's relatively obvious, um, meaning like you can just look at it and understand, which I guess intuitive is a better word rather than obvious. It's more intuitive, if not. Okay, good. So here's where the rubber hits the road. This is where Billy's question comes in. Which do we choose? Well, so there are multiple ways of choosing. So we'll talk about the optimistic case, or the sorry, the optimistic approach, the conservative approach, and the mini max regret approach. It's yes, this is pronounced mini max, mini max, like mini Cooper, but instead of Cooper, it's Max. I don't know why. I feel like they could make a Mini Cooper Max, but no, they have the Clubman Mini Max. I'd buy that. That sounds lit. Mini Max. Anyway. Okay. So, sometimes we don't have probabilities for what's going to happen. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. So, if we don't have probabilities. You know, like, oh, what's going to happen? Is it going to rain today? Well, it might or it might not. Let's say you're locked in a building with no windows. You have no way to know. So, what you might do is like a best case, worst case scenario where you say either raining, depending on what you're looking for, is are you watering crops or are you trying to go play on the beach or something that will determine what best and worst case is. Um, but you can basically just say like, okay, what, what could happen and what do I choose if I'm optimistic versus if I'm pessimistic or, or, or whatever. Okay, so let's talk about some definitions and then I'll give you an, I'll give you an example that will hopefully illustrate it. Okay, so the optimistic approach evaluates each of our decision alternatives looking in terms of the best payoff. So it's basically like, if everything goes according to plan, if I have, if I have, you know, I drank my dose of, uh, of the lucky potion from Harry Potter, which Felix Felicis, I think is the name of it. I'm blanking. You can tell me, anyone want to tell me if I said it right? Felix Fel Fel Felicis, something like that. I think I'm close. Liquid luck. I forget the, the, the Latin name, the um, whatever. Anyway, um, so everything's going according to plan. Well, what would you do then? Like if you knew... You know, you knew that if you bought a scratch-off ticket, you'd win the lottery. What would you do? If you knew that nothing could go wrong, you are a fictional character protagonist with plot armor, what would you do? Okay, so if you are minimizing, right, like trying to spend as little money as possible, then you would choose the alternative with the smallest payoff. If you're trying to make money, make profit or something, you would choose the, the approach giving you the largest payoff. So, of our six choices, our large complex has the highest maximum payoff. So, if we're optimistic, we'll say, yeah, build us that large complex. It's going to work out, right? Yeah. What could go wrong? Nothing. Exactly. I'm so glad you asked. Build us that large one. So, you just pick the best alternative. You know, so it's like, here, here's my example. So, let's say that I'm in Florida and I could go to the beach 
Um, or I can go to uh, like a like a theme park maybe. And if I go to the beach and it rains, I'm just like stuck. You know, you, you, you just like have to leave because like, you know, lightning or something, you cannot be near the beach. But if you go to, go to a theme park, there may be like restaurants included or like uh, there's like other games you can play and stuff. So like, okay, it could be worse. Um, or I could choose to, uh, you know, stay inside and play board games. Well, I can play board games no matter what happens. So even if, you know, it absolutely, you know, there's thunderbolt and lightning, it's very, very frightening me, Galileo, Galileo, you know, even if that happens, board games are good to go. So you might choose to look at the problem one of several ways. So optimistic says, it's not going to rain. I'm going to the beach, baby. We have the conservative approach. Conservative approach looks at it and sees what's the worst that can occur. And this is the one that provides the best of the worst possible payoffs. So you're saying, I want the best option for the worst case scenario. So you might say, well, is, is really worst case scenario at the, at the theme park that I go play ski ball for three hours? Because that would be fun at first, but it might get boring. So maybe I'll choose to stay in and play board games because I'd rather do that than play ski ball for three hours. So and at like you know five dollars a game or whatever it is. So you know I'll choose the one that has the the the, the least bad worst case scenario. So if we look at the uh, go back to our original payoff table, our minimum payoff for the small complex is seven million dollars. We make seven million dollars even if we have low demand. Now, if we, make the, if we build a medium complex, we can still make $5 million, but that large complex, we'll lose a lot of money. So in this case, we would choose, for the conservative approach, we would take the small complex. We'd build a small complex because we'll guarantee we make at least $7 million. That's pretty good. Like, we guarantee we make $7 mil. Maybe there's no biscuit, but you got $7 million. So, you know, that's pretty good. Okay. Now, this is just such a fascinating approach. So we have this idea called regret. 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 It's just, echo it's just echoing. It's catchy. Any idea what it means? Dear humanity. We regret coming to Earth, and we most definitely regret the core just blew off our raggedy-ass fleet. Oorah! There's my Halo 3 quote for the day. I skipped the first line because it's more offensive. Uh, is the guarantee an actual guarantee? Um, well, so we're assuming that something will happen. We've made an assumption. So it's a guarantee that if the assumption is correct, then it's it's what happens. But it, it's it's conditional. You've say, You've made a statement like, if this happens, then this will happen. And so, um, which there's an assumption of the if at the start, and we're also simplifying this to say that we know what's the, what the outcome is given a certain amount of you know, demand, which is, of course, itself an assumption, but it's simplified for the sake of the illustration. So, normally, no. In this illustration, yes. Not sure if that helps. Anyway, so Halo 3 jokes aside, um, regret is the difference between the payoff for a particular decision that we've chosen, primarily, and the payoff associated with, with a decision that would have yielded the most desirable payoff, so either you make the most money, spend the least cost, whatever. So it's the difference between your choice and the best choice given a state of nature. Now remember, the states of nature are coming after your decision. If you could, if you could do this, if the state of decisions come, sorry, the state of nature came first, it would be trivial. You just, which state of, which state of nature is it? Okay, choose the one that makes the most money. Choose the one that costs the least cost. Easy. So what we're going to do is, rather than look at what's the most in the optimistic case, or what's the, well, so what's the most of the conservative case? So what's the most in the best case scenario? What's the most in the worst case scenario? 
what has the least difference between the best for a given state and the the actual given your decision for a given state of nature it's referred to as opportunity loss which is like opportunity cost you might be familiar with from other classes which is basically saying like well because i did this i couldn't do that you know i might order cake and ice cream or i could order pie and ice cream but presumably if I order pie and ice cream, I won't also order cake and ice cream. So I will lose one for the other. Now in dessert, you can just decide which one sounds the best right now, but there's uncertainty. There might be, and in real life, there's uncertainty with, with what you actually get. So mini max regret is actually an abbreviation of minimizing maximum regret. Minimizing maximum regret. Mini max. Let me say that again just to let it start to sink in. Mini max means we're minimizing the maximum state of regret that could occur over all the possible states of nature. Okay? We're going to choose. So for each decision alternative, we have three choices small, medium, large, right? For each one, there are um, two states of nature. So for each state of nature, there is one best case scenario. And we could choose the decision alternative that would have the minimum, maximum regret occurring over all the possible states. And there's a formula here. I think it's easier to just look at this. Okay, so here is our regret table. Now, you may need to go back to the previous table to make sure you remember all the numbers. Um, well, let's do that real quickly, actually. So let's just take the first one, okay? So I'll, we'll look at the table for the first one. Okay, so if I choose the small complex D, D1, and we have strong demand, I make $8 million. Oh, that's nice. But I'll be kicking myself thinking, dang it, why didn't I build the large complex? Why didn't I take the blue pill? Matrix reference there. Why didn't I build the small, or why didn't I build the large complex? My regret, I could have made $12 million more than the $8 million I actually made. Similarly, the medium complex from $14 million, I could have made 20 I could have made six more. So my regret for D1 with S1 is 12. I could have made 12 million. I could have made 6 million. And in the case of large, my regret is zero because I couldn't have done any better. And similarly over here, seven's the best. So this regret is zero. Five is two short of seven. And this is 16 short of seven. I passed it, I think. No, I didn't pass it. So we see our regret here under a strong demand, 12 for small complex, 6 for medium, 0 for large. Under weak demand, 0, 2, and 16. Now, this is just regret. So what are we doing? Minimizing maximum regret. So to get the maximum regret for each of our decision alternatives, we just compare the two numbers per row. For, the, for each decision variable, I'm sorry, each um, decision outcome, we choose um, the larger of the two numbers. So in this case, 12 or 0, 12 is the biggest, so 12 goes here. 6 and 2, 6 is the biggest, 6 goes here. 0, 16, 16 is the biggest, so 16 goes here. So that gives us table 15.5, which is the maximum regret for each alternative. And what do we want to do? Choose the minimum maximum regret. And so we pick the medium complex because it has the minimum maximum regret. So build the regrets, choose, make the maximum regret table, and then find the minimum of the maximum regrets. Mini max regret. So, it's kind of a headache. It's complicated. 
but I think it's cool. It's a really interesting approach. So if you're the kind of person who overthinks like, oh man, I should have done this, you know, uh, or if that's kind of your, you know, you know, you want to, you want to do well, you don't necessarily need to, uh, like make a ton of money, but you really don't want to, you don't really want to miss out on your opportunities. Um, you know, large established corporations often take this approach, you know, they're really risk averse, uh, and they just want to like, you know, they want to make money they want to, their bonuses may come off of that, but you know, they're certainly not going to take the optimistic case. They'll go with a conservative case or the minimax regret. Okay, so all of this is without probabilities. Can I go next? Okay, so... Okay, yeah, so I already explained this. This is from the previous slide. Okay, so... Now we can talk a little bit about what do you do with probabilities. Um, so uh, there's a little bit in here that I want to cover. We only have a few minutes left. Um, I can't remember which slide it is. Um, but I did put one question in the homework about this, I think, um, which is looking at the expected value. Expected value. Let me actually, you know what? I'm sorry, guys. Hang on a second. Where I looked at it right before class. Where is it? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's in this. I think it's up here. It's not part of Bayes' theorem. Okay, it's in the next thing, so we'll just flip through this really fast. Okay, so basically, um, if, you look, if you're looking at the, this is a little comment, and we'll just kind of move past it. So the expected value of a given decision um, is the sum of weighted payoffs for a decision alternative, um, which is actually, and, so the, and the weight is the probability that that um, state of nature will occur, which this is actually exactly the same concept we talked about in 368. Um, so basically, you just multiply the probabilities, probability here times the payoff. So if I choose small condominium and there's an 80% chance of weak demand, then I have an 80% chance of getting eight, and I have a 20% chance of getting seven. Um, and so we can say 0.8 times eight plus 0.2 times seven. This is like sum product in Excel terms. Um, so if you're building a spreadsheet model, that's how you do it some product of these, I'm oh, sorry, of these times these for each of your three alternatives. And then that'll give you, so 0.8 times 8, whatever that is, plus 0.2 times 7 will give you the expected value for a small condominium, and you repeat the process for medium and large. So that gives you your expected value. Here's the math that I just described. Here are your actual numbers. Oh, okay, so while this is pretty scary, We've got an 80% chance of making 20 mil, so our expected value is pretty good for large. That's, in the long term, going to be your, your best average if you can do it over and over and over and over again. But of course, in real life, obviously, you can't do that. So, um, in theory, choosing your branch with the best expected value is in the long term the best alternative and it is the recommended decision but in practice this is dangerous even so you have to decide if the risk is worth it because you know if you're if it's like a if the worst case scenario completely crashes your business like makes you go bankrupt it's probably not worth the risk maybe it is i'd say yes you know that the uh the aliens guy or yes, or is it? Whatever his quote is, basically. So there's a whole thing that we don't really don't have time to get into, um, but just so you know, it exists. There's the whole like risk analysis, combining what could happen, what might happen, what might not happen. Um, so there's things that called risk profiles, and there's like sensitivity analysis, like what might happen. You know, so you have like 
uh, you know, variances and crazy stuff like that. Okay, so this is the last thing that I want to do. Um, it's fairly simple um, in concept. Um, there is a very simple problem in the homework about it. Um, so basically, we want to know the value of information because sometimes you have the option that, you know, I can pay some amount of money to, you know, sample the market or do some kind of, um, you know, maybe hire consultants or something like this that will help us have much more accurate information about, um, you know, our sample states. So we can, we can increase the probability of knowing what's going to happen, meaning we can increase probability of certain outcomes, decrease the probability of other outcomes. Uh, and so the part of this is like, there's like a prior probability, posterior probabilities. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. Um, I don't want you to focus on that right now. Um, I want to skip past all of this. So you can do like, if it's favorable, construct the large. If the market research is unfavorable, you can kind of do these kinds of things. Um, but I don't want to talk about it. where is the do 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 no. Okay, so here's the cool thing. Here's our last concept. So there is a uh, complicated process somewhat of how you actually get these numbers. Um, sometimes, um, so the, the example problem in the homework is nowhere nearly nowhere near this complicated, so don't worry about it. Um, so what's important is that um, we can get, with new information, we can make a better decision. Okay, and so that's this thing right here. So if you remember from before, where's the number? 16 something? No, not that. Where is it? 14.2. Okay, so from where we came in the last few minutes, last several minutes, our expected value for building a large condominium complex is 14.2 million dollars. However, if we do this big report and go through all the math on the previous slides that I'm waving my hands past, we can find an expected value with perfect information to be 17.4 million dollars. So, oh, it's right here, 14.2. Wow, that would be nice to remember. Okay, so. They're given to you. Just give another problem. Okay, so how much was this information worth? Well, your expected value of your decision went up from 14 million to 17 million with some decimals. So the difference between those two numbers is the value of information. In this case, 3 million. 3.2 million dollars in fact. So what that means is we can make a much better decision with perfect with information than we can without it. And so there's various grades of this like this is considered perfect information um, but there's also like well what would I do if I had you know like probabilities versus not having probabilities you know because maybe I'll pay for us I'll pay for a, a market study which will give me probabilities but I can never know with certainty and so you can ask this question and I think that's how the homework question works is it's you know what what is it worth to you to have these this probabilistic information instead of um, just kind of like you know just kind of YOLOing it there's no new Excel for this no it's just like if I give you a picture of a decision tree can you interpret it? And uh, if I give you the decision tree, can you plug the numbers into Excel? Which uh, all you need to know is like some product. You know, this times that plus this times that. This times that plus this times that. That kind of stuff. Nothing new. So that's it. That is the last idea. This idea of information, the expectation you get without information, the expectation you get with information, and you subtract with minus without and that should give you the value. And that's all we have time for, folks. So, um, sorry for the little hiccup there, as I couldn't remember where, where that slide was. Um, but I'm glad we got through everything. Um, 
I know we have had a lot of new stuff this week, um, which is why I'm giving you a lot of assignments. Um, so you've got time to practice it. So, um, like I said, uh, I've given you windows to fill out these assignments. Um, this is it. This is our last lecture. So that's why I said, I said earlier the thing about like new information versus new uh, assignments. This is the limit of new information. This is it. Nothing new after today. I know, Billy, me too. I'll miss you guys. So, you know, we had like our last lectures. Well, I, I still have Monday. We had our last Wednesday for my stats classes. And with them, I said, you know, I'm going to miss you guys unless I see you again in 377 and 379 and one of our other courses. But you guys are spreading your wings and you're going to fly away. You can go do great things. I hope you remember me. <laughs> Thanks for everything, guys. Have a good summer. Stay safe. I know. I know. What? Antavis, you don't think I'm going to miss you? Come on. I knew what you meant, Billy. Yeah, actually, you know, it's funny. It's one of my favorite parts of the semester. Not like seeing you leave, but like there's something like, I don't know, like cathartic or like really satisfying of like, this is a semester well done. And, you know, like, it, it feels like a mini graduation. That's why I like it. To me, when you guys come out of my class, it feels like a mini graduation. Because I recognize that these cl this class is hard. It's one of the hardest classes in the college. I hear that pretty consistently. So, yeah, I like shaking your hands for that mini graduation. It's kind of like a walk. You know, I stand near the door and I'm like, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. It's great. But not, not today, unfortunately. Um, have I heard anything on summer classes? So the um, so there are three summer terms. There's all summer, which is summer one. Then there's uh, the first half and second half. Um, second half and uh, first half and second half. So summer two, summer th summer three for the um, for the second half. Um, so if you if you're taking classes in summer one, which is the all summer or summer two, which is the first half of summer, so um, May and June, then um, those classes are online, um, already confirmed. If you are in summer three, the second half of the semester, um, it is currently undecided. I'm feeling pretty optimistic about it because um, the summer classes tend to be pretty small. So, you know, the whole idea of like large gatherings isn't really an issue. We can easily sit with six feet between us, you know, just leave like a couple seats between you and we can spread out in the classroom pretty easily. So I'm optimistic that we'll be back face to face for um, for the third part of summer for summer three classes. But uh, I think I have like nine students registered for my class or 10 students or something. So there's not going to be very many students in the room. I don't think that's a problem, but that isn't my decision. And of course, I don't know what the future is going to be like. So, um, we could model this as a decision analysis problem, <laughs> but I would not have probabilities for anything. So it, it would be the, uh, the first one we could look at it as optimistic, um, optimistic, cautious, or, um, mini max regret. Or what do we call it? I'm blanking on the actual name. Conservative, yeah, whatever. Conservative, cautious, one of those C words. Yes, everyone, stay safe and healthy. Absolutely, as Natalia says, stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, did I miss anything else? Oh, and Tavis. Oh, thank you. Zombies beat up by their own syllabuses. It's like getting hit by a syllabus. A syllabus. Get it? <laughs> Learn, improve, and grow. That's my motto. So keep at it. Keep working hard. We'll get there.
He's safe, everybody. What do you mean, respond to email? I mean, yeah. Yeah. I have to, I have a, a few emails waiting for me um, that I haven't replied to yet, so I apologize for that. I'm going to do that in just a moment. As soon as class is over, get caught up on that stuff. I have like, oh, I know a couple of people ask me questions about the homework or stuff, but I haven't gotten to it for the day. So. Of course. Yep. Discord is generally easier for me. Um, I, I like the interaction style on Discord, but email is okay. Just because emails, like the whole, the idea of like conversations is a little clumsy in email. I think it's a lot easier to like have an interaction, like repeated short term interactions on Discord. I think it's easier. I also like being able to edit <laughs> if I like make a typo and send it. I'm like, oh crap. I just go in there and edit it. Cool. I mean, you know, either one's fine. That's just my preference. So. So, if you're watching on YouTube, that's it. This is the last one. So, this is Rob Cook, signing off.